Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey, Tea Sippers. Happy Wednesday. I hope you guys are doing good today. So there is a lot more dirt coming out about Diddy. This entire situation is crazy. So what we're going to do is kind of do like we did last time when I scrolled through the documents. And I'm going to read a lot of specific parts. Now, one of the things that you guys will notice as I start this scroll is that on this lawsuit that was filed by young Jane Doe, it says Jane Doe plaintiff versus Sean Combs. Harvey Pierre, the third assailant, Diddy's House Recordings, Inc., Bad Boy Entertainment Holdings, Inc. as well. Now, if you guys notice, this also has a trigger warning. And what's very interesting about this, this was the same trigger warning that was on Cassie's statement, okay? It says, trigger warning, this document contains highly graphic information of a sexual nature, including sexual assault. On top of that, the same lawyer that is defending this uh, Jane Doe is also the same lawyer that Cassie used to get her settlement in 24 hours. So um, they just go on to talk about that in the first two pages. So I'm gonna go down to where the story starts. So around line six, it says here, specifically in 2003, when she was only 17 years old and in the 11th grade, Miss Doe was sex trafficked and ganged ard by Mr. Combs and Mr. Pierre and a third assailant. In short, when she was a teenager, Miss Doe met Mr. Pierre and the third assailant in a lounge in Detroit, Michigan. Then they also go on to state on line 18 in 2003, Miss Doe was a 17 year old 11th grader residing in the suburb of Detroit, Michigan. At the time, Mr. Combs, who was 34 years old, twice the age of Miss Doe, and one of the most well known and influential music artists of all time. A decade later, Mr. Combs founded Bad Boys and installed his lifelong friend, Mr. Pierre, into the role of the president. At the time, Mr. Combs had many connections in Michigan, including, among others, to the Black Mafia family, a.k.a. BMF, a drug trafficking and money laundering organization that is rumored to have seated Bad Boy. Oh, my gosh, this is getting deep, y'all. This is some, you know, I'm saying uh, DEA type stuff. According, accordingly, upon information and belief that Mr. Combs' associates, including Mr. Pierre and the third assailant, spent significant time in and around Detroit, Michigan. On um, one evening between the spring of fall of 2003, Miss Doe was out with friends. It was not uncommon for her and her friends to frequent bars and lounges in the Detroit area. A certain of Miss Doe's friends were well connected to people in the music industry. On the evening in question, Miss Doe was with her friends in the lounge when she was approached by who she later learned was Mr. Pierre. Mr. Pierre was with his own friends, including the third assailant. Mr. Pierre and the third assailant and their friends were dressed in suits. Mr. Pierre repeatedly complimented Miss Doe's appearance, saying that she was hot, among, amongst other things. He then began talking about his self-described best friend and brother, Mr. Combs. Specifically, Mr. Pierre continually stated that Mr. Combs would love to meet Miss Doe. Mr. Pierre eventually called Mr. Combs and put Miss Doe on the line. Mr. Combs told Miss Doe that he would love to meet her and that she should accompany Mr. Pierre to New York City on a private jet. Shortly thereafter, Mr. Pierre directed Miss Doe to go with him into the bathroom at the lounge. Once inside, Mr. Pierre began to smoke crack cocaine from what it appeared to be an aluminum can. After he finished smoking crack, Mr. Pierre suddenly took out his penis and demanded that Miss Doe suck his peen and force Miss Doe's head down to perform oral sex on him. After sexually assaulting Miss Doe, Mr. Pierre directed her to accompany him and the third assailant, a third member of their group, to an airport in Pontiac, Michigan, where Signature, a fixed base operator, had prepared a private jet to take off for them to New York City. Upon information and belief, the private jet landed in Teterboro Airport. Upon departing the jet, two black SUVs were awaiting the group. Miss Doe got into the SUV with Mr. Pierre and the third assailant, and the other member of the group went into the second SUV. The SUV brought the group to, to Daddy's house, 
recording studio. Recording studio owned and operated by Mr. Combs and Bad Boy. While at the studio, Mr. Combs and his associates, including Mr. Pierre, plied Miss Doe with drugs and alcohol. As the night wore on, the 17-year-old Miss Doe became more and more inebriated, and eventually to the point that she could not possibly have consented to having sex with anyone, much less someone twice her age. While at the studio, Miss Doe was gang raped by Mr. Combs and a third assailant, Mr. Pierre, in that order. While Mr. Combs was raping Miss Doe, he complained that he could not get off unless she pinched his nipples as hard as she could. What the hell? Okay, this is my first time reading this, obviously. Um, Mr. Combs then watched as the third assailant, who Miss Doe had not even realized, had begun to have sex with her, rape Miss Doe, and she told him to stop. After the third assailant was finished, Mr. Pierre took his turn at raping Miss Doe and then violently forcing her to give him more oral sex, during which Miss Doe was choking and struggling to breathe. When Mr. Pierre was finished, he left Miss Doe in the bathroom alone. Miss Doe fell into a fetal position laying on the floor. Her vagina was in pain. Finally, after a period of time, Miss Doe regained her bearings. However, she could barely stand up following the gang rape and had to be helped to walk out of the building and back into a car. She was taken back to the airport and flown back to Michigan. Oh my gosh. However, she has very limited recollect recollection of the transportation home. Only remembers being in a car sometime early in the morning. Unlike many of the victims who have come forward after decades, Miss Doe can prove that she not only met Mr. Combs on the night in question, but he was in his studio in New York, in New York City with him on that night. Remember when viewing these, Miss Doe is 17 years old. And um, this is that. This is how we dressed in the early 2000s. You know, the short mini skirts with the belt. She got on a Dolce and Gabbana top. Like you can tell, this was taken back then. Even the quality um, of the film. This is definitely how we dressed in the early 2000s. So she was definitely at Diddy's house, um, at the studio, excuse me. Then they go on to say, Miss Doe had lived with the memories of that fateful night for 20 years, during which she suffered extreme emotional duress that impacted nearly every aspect. Miss Doe's face has been blurred in the following pictures for the purpose of anonymity. In her life and personal relationships, given that brave women who come forward against Mr. Combs and Mr. Pierre in recent weeks, Miss Doe is doing the same. To that end, Miss Doe brings this attention-seeking, injunctive, declaratory, and monetary relief against the defendants in violations of the Victims of Gender Motivated Violence Act NYC. Amendment Code 10-1101. They also go on to say that Miss Jane Doe is a citizen of Canada. The defendant Sean Combs is a citizen of California. Defendant Harley Pierre is a citizen of New York. The defendant, the third assailant upon information, is a citizen of the state of New York. So then in line 48 on page 10, they go on to say Miss Doe knew that speaking out against the defendant would be extremely difficult and that she'd be likely subjected to retaliation and defamatory slurs and attacks. However, in November 2023, Miss Doe read about a lawsuit filed against Mr. Combs by Cassandra Ventura, a.k.a. Cassie. Miss Ventura's suit described a decade of physical and mental abuse. Most triggering for Miss Doe was reading about Miss Ventura's allegations of sex trafficking and being forced to have sex with other men against her will. Miss Doe obviously understands that she too had been sex trafficked and that Mr. Cohn's behavior in forcing women into non consensual sex was not an isolated incident or uniquely only to Miss Ventura. Then days later, Miss Doe read about the case filed against Mr. Pierre and the suit that alleged that Mr. Pierre used his position. Um, of power at Bad Boy to groom and sexually assault his former assistant. Seeing two other women bravely speak out against Mr. Combs and Mr. Pierre, respectively, gave Miss Doe the confidence to tell her story as well. As such, she filed this suit. Once again, as you guys see at the bottom, the lawyer is Douglas H. Whitger, who was the same man who took down Harvey Weinstein, who was the same man that got Cassie Ventura, that huge settlement, in less than 24 hours. So she definitely has a good team behind her. Um, this whole situation is crazy. Now, Diddy is speaking out. So Diddy is definitely speaking out about the situation. And I'm going to read to you guys what Diddy had to say. He says, enough is enough. 
For the last couple of weeks, I have sat silently and watched people try to assassinate my character, destroy my reputation and my legacy. Sickening allegations have been made against me by individuals looking for a quick payday. Let me be absolutely clear. I did not do any of these awful things being alleged. I will fight for my name, my family, and for the truth, Sean Diddy Combs. Now, my issue is this, okay? Even if these folks are clout chasing, he needs to understand that he basically allowed the ball to get rolling for them to clout chase. Remember, he went and he settled his case against Cassie within 24 hours. So that opened up the floodgates. Because if you're not even willing to fight, First, you said you were innocent. Then 24 hours later, you settled. That threw all innocence out the window because, you know, once they do the discovery and they go through, you know, years of messages. And I'm sure Cassie had so many receipts. It would have destroyed his empire. So for him, it was smarter to settle. So he needs to understand that he brought this on himself. And I'm not just talking about his sexual exploits because what he does in his bedroom, that's really none of my business. But let's talk about what we can see publicly because I can't see what goes on in his bedroom. But publicly, the way that Diddy has treated people, his artists, people who came up with him, people who helped him build his empire that he has today, and the fact that only him and his family are eating and everybody else is either dead, gone, died, broke, you know what I'm saying, has had to fight him for publishing. He didn't even offer up publishing until he had already sold the majority of the popular publishing. Then he wanted to offer his former artist basically scraps. So my thing is this, you have treated people horribly over the past 30 years. Okay, so you caused this to happen. You allowed the floodgates to open up by treating Cassie horribly, by treating Kim horribly, by treating Misa horribly, by treating Jean Deal and Mark Curry, Mace, and so many other people, uh, the Danny D. Kane girls making of the band. You treated these people horribly, Freddie P. Okay, and now the chickens are coming home to roost. So I don't feel bad for him. You know, now he wants to fight for his name, his family, his legacy. That is because the checks are running low. Everybody's backing up off of Diddy. If you guys don't know, Diageo, the liquor company, they're begging once again the judge to block Toxic Diddy from their new ads. And these ads, from what I'm hearing, are worth close to $15 million. And so they're very upset about this situation. So this is what Diageo is saying. Uh, Diageo says that Sean Diddy Combs has become too toxic in the wake of three sexual assault lawsuits filed against him. And this was yesterday, so they weren't even ready for this new lawsuit that just came out today. It would be unfair for a judge to grant his request for control over an incoming $15 million marketing budget from De Leon Tequila. In a new letter to the court obtained by Rolling Stone, Diageo says Combs' plan to plaster his face on new ads for their premium spirits would be devastating. The disturbing allegations against Mr. Combs set forth in these lawsuits underscore that any De Leon campaign featuring Mr. Combs would compound and amplify the harm that he has already caused to De Leon. Diageo's lawyers write to Justice Joel M. Cohen of New York County Supreme Court, a letter dated December 1st, requiring Diageo to pay for such a campaign would be devastating to the brand and to Diageo more broadly. A major De Leon theme party in Atlanta was canceled after Cassie's news broke. Then Diddy reportedly was dropped by the charter school in Harlem that he co-founded after the two lawsuits followed. Mr. Combs is well aware that these lawsuits make it impossible for him to continue to be the face of anything Diageo's lawyers wrote. It would be unfair and beyond reason to require Diageo to deepen its association with Mr. Combs concerning De Leon when so many others are fleeing his now toxic image. So it's getting real out here. Now, another thing that's very interesting and disturbing is that Mark Curry and um, Gene Deal have been recalling a lot of incidences and some of them to me are, you know, it kind of makes them a little bit complicit as well. Um, there was a one where Mark Curry was talking about how Diddy and them would like spike Moet bottles and tell the guys, you know, don't touch those, but touch those and then go around giving girls pills. Um, there was another instant, I believe Gene Deal was talking about how Diddy threatened Danny D. Kane and basically said if they don't do what he wants them to do, he's going to drug them up and pimp them out and have them fuck all of his homeboys. Kind of like what this woman is alleging in the lawsuit. So, so there's a lot of just really nefarious, demonic shit going on, you know, in this whole camp. I want you guys to go ahead and watch these videos right here. 
it's the same thing that he gave to all his artists when he gave them their publishing back. I'm going to give y'all y'all publishing, but y'all can't talk about Janice Cone, Justin Cone, uh, Sony, Bad Boy, or anything that happened. Y'all can't talk about none of that. But there's some artists that didn't say anything, that didn't sign it, and they able to talk about anything they want to. And I think that's those girls that was, I think, Danny D. Kane. I, I think a couple of them didn't sign it. And boy, oh boy, they probably going to go after him too. Because I heard him, and I'm giving you this, Aubrey. He stood up there and he said in front of a lot of people, we were in the studio. And I said something to him and walked out the studio. He said, yo, I'm going to drug their ass off and pick them out and, and, and pip them out to my, <laughs> pip them out to my neck. He said, I'm going to drug them out. I'm going to get them all on drugs and I'm going to pimp their ass out to my neck. And I was like, know somebody kids and walked out. And there's somebody that heard me. It's somebody that heard me. I mean, well, it's not only somebody that heard me. It's somebody that I know who was in the studio at the time that happened, and I still talk to him today. So when you get up, they be like, don't touch them bottles right there and only drink them bottles right there. So we already knew what the drill was. You just don't mess with them bottles, right? Then all of the girls is in the club after a while. They all running, look, opening up their mouth like little birds. He's running around just popping pills in their mouth. Pop, pill, 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 pill. And then that was the party. But all of the females that was in, that's what they wanted. That was what party. It was part of the hip-hop culture. We ain't see nothing wrong with it until Bill Cosby got in trouble. He did one too many. Man, look. <laughs> I used to, let me tell you, sir, I don't mean to cut you, this is funny. Brother, brother P, yeah. yes, sir. My brother P. Yes, sir. Yeah, it's my God. In my the brother. Diddy. Always, you know, nigga. Y'all turn up. For L, nigga. Yeah, we on. For L, nigga. We about yeah. to turn up. Oh, man, good morning, man. Aaron Hall. So all of us say, I'm not doing that today. No, 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 I'm not going there today. I'm sorry, y'all. This is personal. My entire life was altered by this person. I I'm not going to stop. I am watching this shit like a TV show. This man deserves everything. I'm not even going to give y'all all that. All I'm going to say is, I wonder what them boys had to do for that check. He touched the Wee Wee Kelly. Come on, man. No, man. Oh, y'all ain't going to tell me. This predator. Ain't prey on y'all. He's so friendly. Yeah, daddy. And all. Come on, man. Come on, man. He ain't giving up no millions without something, man. Y'all heard what he did to Jock? Busted his back wide open. You heard? I'm starting to. All those stories are true. I'm starting to believe it. And that shit was uh, with Kim. That shit far fetched. Rest in peace to that man. Facts. Oh. The facts. You got to look at them. Even Kanye made motherfucking Big Sean a millionaire. Yeah. Even Kanye made John Legend a millionaire. Facts. Why you don't have one millionaire under your belt? Mm. You get what I'm saying? It's the facts, bro. You don't deal with 40, 50 artists, man, and, and you man, you the only one that made money. You the only one. You the only one that still survived. Jay Z got a list of people up on there. He the only one, bro, because he don't have no talent. His talent is robbing people. I'm starving too. So, yo, yo, yo. I want me. A piece of cheesecake. <laughs> From the Most of the artists that were signed to Bad Boy either end up broke, dead, in some kind of legal trouble, or they've tried their hardest to get away from Diddy. I mean, when you look at the hit records, Diddy seems great. But when you look at the track record, not so much. All right, so you guys just saw those videos. So I go back again to what Diddy is saying, where he's upset and he's saying enough is enough. And, you know, these this is all slander against me. But the problem why people can believe this, even let's say some of these girls are lying or looking for a clout chase, 
The reason why people can believe this is because of your character. And what people don't understand is that character is not just a word, but character is very important because it also shows who you are when nobody else is watching. When the public isn't watching you, when people don't know your day to day, how do you act behind the scenes? How do you treat people when nobody's watching just God? And I remember there was an old saying, I learned this back in high school, it was a poem or something like that, and I never forgot it. Our art teacher gave it to us, and it says, watch your thoughts because they become your words. Watch your words because they become your actions. Watch your actions, they become your habits. Watch your habits, they become your character. Watch your character for it becomes your destiny. I've never forgotten that. We got that from our teacher over 20-something years ago, and that still sticks with me to this day. Your character and what you're forming, even if you're young, you have to watch your character because it becomes your destiny. And for a long time, he's had a shady, thieving, jealous, manipulative character. And this is why there's nobody really running to defend him, because that is who he is. Puffy, right? His baby mom, Kim Porter, right? She got a whole lot of Tupac-related posts on her IG. She's right next to Puffy, and she's wearing a Tupac shirt. Did Tupac and Kim Porter know each other? Bruh, all the people in the industry know at one time, Pac and Puff was like this. They was cool enough where they became enemies. Do you understand that? Where Pac didn't trust him no more, and where Puff idolized some of the things that he was doing. And you got to remember, they was all swingers. Something happened between them two, and I don't know what it was, and I don't know what it is that caused a friction between their relationship. Maybe Kim liked Pac more than she liked Puff, but she couldn't have Pac. Puff took Tupac blueprint and changed Bigs and bad boy in image. I get around. I get around, talked about how fly you was, how many girls you mess with, how many cars you drive, how much money you got, what you willing to do. He took his image. Pac was the first one on the scene wearing Versace shirts. Who was obsessed with who? Pac had Sarah before Puff. Allegedly, he had Sally before Puff. And Kim had an obsession or liked Pac so much, she on a red carpet with Tupac's shirt. Because that is who he is. And I remember around Halloween when I told you guys, when he was running around like the Joker, I said, this man is literally the living embodiment of the Joker. He is playing in everybody's face. That is who he really is. That whole brother love persona I've been telling y'all for years is bullshit. That is for him to fool this generation who weren't around during making of the band, who weren't around in the late 90s. We were so invested in making of the band. That's why it really hurts to see Freddie P, Elliot Ness. We seen Chopper get popped for, you know, pimping girls out. You know, Babs is doing her thing. Shout out to Sis. She's a tea sipper. But it's sad that none of these people really made it. And we made them and MTV millions of dollars. Danny D. Kane, you know, the boy band that he had. It's just sad. There's nothing to show for it. So this man's character is flawed. So I don't care what he writes on social media. This is why people are more likely to side with the clout chasers and the victims because of how you've done people over the years. And I feel no type of ways. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get the discussion pop. And I look forward to reading y'all's comments. Make sure you guys like the video. Feel free to share the video. And most importantly, make sure you still subscribe to the channel. And I'll talk to y'all later. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sir, your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.